All right, guys, this is the story. This quad turned up in the shop. The owner had stripped all of the wiring off because he had a battery drain and couldn't remember how it went back together. So I bought a new wiring loom that came with all the electrical components and put that on there and I couldn't get a spark. Well, because that wiring loom for that $30 kit comes with all the electrical, I just replaced all the electrical on it and I still couldn't get a spark. We like to test, not guess. And for $30, I was too tempted to guess by just replacing stuff. So we're going back to square one. We're gonna test. And I'm gonna use this guy, a non-working model, to get working from this guy, a working model. This is my son's. So I think it's best to start where the spark begins, which is at the stator. So let's check out this one first. All right, let me get you up to speed where we're at right now. Um, I do have this jumped out. This is your brake switch. So the reason I'm jumping this out and not plugging it in is because I want to be able to test it off from here so I can hit the start button and not have to also step on it. So that is something for you to check on your quad. If that brake, che um, brake switch is broken, you can take this, put your meter on continuity and put them in there. If you're pressing that brake down and you're not getting continuity, your, your, uh, quad, your quad isn't going to want to turn over. So um, other than that, yes, everything's just laying down here, not up on the quad. So let's go to our, this is the stator wire is coming out. We don't have to take the cover off yet unless we get something wonky on these. So the first thing with the stator, we want to make sure that it's sending power to the CDI box. Um, and that power is given by the black with the red stripe. And I can trace that here, black with the red stripe coming out of the stator and that's going to be AC voltage so let's get our meter set up to AC we'll put the ground one terminal on the ground and we'll go there on our black with red stripe and see what we get okay we're getting 23 volts AC now let's see if that's the voltage that's correct, if that's what we get on the good one. Okay, here we are at the good one. Let's get on the ground, and then here's our blue, or sorry, black with the red stripe. Okay, and we can see that that's actually putting out 40 volts AC. Now, is that enough difference to not charge that um, CDI box enough. I see 43 volts AC. And that one we were getting 20. Okay, so the charging voltage out of the stator to the CDI box, we have 20 volts AC on the known bad guy. The known good guy, we're getting 40 volts AC. That's the charging volts. Now I wanna look at the trigger signal, which meters aren't really set up to do such a thing, but I still want to try to measure the volts AC and see if the meter does match up between the two. So we're on volts AC, we're on ground. Let's go to blue and white, which is our trigger. Actually, let's go all the way. You can measure it here or for, for a better test, go all the way to the CDI box because that will Make sure you don't have a break from here to here, which could get you. So we're on blue to white. All right, looks like it's bouncing up to like 0.1 volts AC. Again, the meters aren't really able to measure. Again, meters aren't really able to measure the, the signal from your stator to the CDI box, but I'm hoping that we can match up um, good and bad, if you know what I mean. So let's go to blue and white. Okay, that's up to 0.2. And that might be because this has just a better stator in it. Um, 
Is that enough difference? I don't know yet. Let's keep looking. Okay, a quick note here before we continuing our testing. Um, there's a bunch of different safeties on these. There's your brake safety, that's to start it. There's your tether here, there's this kill switch, there's a key switch on the other side. All of those things will ground out this guy right here. This is your um, black with a white stripe. So this is all set to run. I want to see if there's any ground on here. I got my meter on continuity to ground and that's not grounded out. And you can see if I hit this, it'll ground that out. And what that does is the CDI, instead of sending the spark to the engine, it'll just send it to ground. So let's go back over to our bad quad. Let's just, I just wanna confirm that it's not a safety switch if I don't have something hooked up correctly or not. So let's get on ground. Back to our CDI, and there's no continuity there. We can hit this, and that will ground it. So, with that test, I've proven that a safety is not active, causing no spark. So, back to the stator we go. Okay, so because our numbers were so different coming out of our stators, I think the easiest solution to do right now is to switch out these stators. And yes, this is the new stator from the kit. Make sure you pick the dirt out of those. Aha! Well, that's why we're getting different voltages. It's because these stators aren't the same. Well, <laughs> this is what you get when you, have, when you think you have identical Chinese stuff, and it's not. Obviously, this is a six-pole stator, and this is a two-pole stator, which the connections are also different. So we couldn't even try to put this one on there unless we want to do a bunch of rewiring. I don't want to do that. So that fully stops our first premise of <laughs> getting the same readings between the two. Okay, so now that we know the stators are different, that explains why we were getting different voltages out of them. And it also seems to me it confirms that this stator is working properly because it's a quarter, a third of the size. It's a two pole versus an eight pole. So if that's putting out 40 volts and this is putting out 20 volts, this is putting out a 0.1 volt AC for the signal, and this is point out 0.2. That makes me feel good that our stator is correct. So what's continuing following that voltage, it goes to the CDI box. The CDI box is getting the correct um, charging volts, and it's getting the correct signal. We're, we're making that assumption. So now, if all that's happy and our kill wire is not grounded, we checked all the safety, um, let's make sure the next thing that this goes to is your coil and then to your spark plug. Which, spark plugs are cheap enough, you can buy one, try it out. Um, but I want to continue tracing this, um, this voltage. So let's disconnect our coil here. 
let's just confirm that we have continuity from ground to ground and also from the spark to the spark on the CBI box. So our meter's on continuity. Let's try ground first, ground to ground, continuity. Spark is your black and yellow wire. That's your top right if you're looking at it. Continuity. So we're trusting the CDI box is good. It's getting all the correct inputs. Let's trust that it's sending out the correct inputs. That brings us to our coil. How do we test one of these? Let's go to the bench. Okay, we got the coil on the bench, meter set to ohms. Let's measure between our, our primary and ground. That's not good. We're looking for 0.3 to 0.1. We're looking for very low ohms. And I see very high ohms. Um, let's measure between um, our trigger wire to our spark plug boot. If you hear some yelling, that is not a child, that is a goat. That I'm getting... Nothing. Hmm. Uh, let's pull in another coil here. So this is the coil that came with the kit. This is the one that was on the bike. Let's go, let's test the primary side. And we have 0.3 ohms. That's exactly, 0.3 ohms is what we want. Now let's go Um, from the trigger wire to the spark plug and we get seven kilo ohms and usually we want to see that between 8,000 to 11,000 and that's seven, 7,000 so let's put this old one back on and see if we get a spark. All right, now the only issue with this is that with this wiring harness, the grounds hook up just fine, but now we have two females for our trigger wire. So we're gonna have to pinch this one down to make it a female. Let's get the plastic off of it. Pinch it down. Like so, was that small enough? Pinch it down a little bit more. I think that's a good enough connection. Let's make sure ignition is on, kill is not on, batteries in. No spark. Let's try a different spark plug. Nothing. I wonder can we get this to spark? No. No spark there.
Okay, I brought my meter back over. We're on volts AC. Let's see if we get, remember that that signal was 0.1 volts. Let's see if we are getting anything coming out of um, our black with yellow stripe going to our spark plug. And it is, it is jumping up. So in my mind, even though this thing tested good, it does look, is there bad ground there? That looks pretty bad. Do we have a bad coil, I wonder? Well, here we go, through the power of the internet, we got a whole nother electrical set here. Now, what one is the coil, I wonder? It looks like a CDI. Capacitor discharge ignition. That looks like a start solenoid. is a rectifier. It would be the last thing we pick. Our new coil. Let's run this one through the same test. <clears throat> that we did for the other ones. Go to ohms. Okay, let's go to lead to lead. 0.5 ohms. One point eight kilo ohms. Of course, with this new coil, it wants these spade connectors, and I have the bullet connectors, so I'm just going to um, make up a, a wire. These are the wires I made up. Black with yellow uh, tracer and then green. And these of course will go on here and this obviously doesn't need to get grounded this coil because you're getting the ground here. Let's get a spark plug in here. Let's see, is our key on? Battery, it's got juice. Kill switch is not on. No spark. All right, gents, so here's where we're at. We traced everything out and tested everything and everything appears to be fine. I'm still go back to this stator and I looked up some specs for it, what it should be. And I just want to go through these. So let's get this on ground, put our meter on ohms. And our trigger wire, which is our black and our blue and white, should be 150 ohms. So let's back probe this. We got 128, 129 ohms. I'm happy with that. The AC power to power the CDI is your uh, black with red tracer. 
318 ohms. And that should be more like 450 ohms is what I found online. And the, also online, I've been finding you should be p pushing 40 to 80 uh, volts AC when you're turning it over. And we've, if we go back here, when we crank it, let's go back to volts AC. And we're getting 36. I was gonna check for spark again without having it hooked up. We're getting 36, which is, I mean, it's just under 40. Is that enough to do it? I don't know if we're not, are we, is our starter tired and it's not cranking it fast enough? Our battery is fully, is charged. Yeah, we still don't have spark. So I'm determined to get this thing running. I'm curious if we, if we need to try, are we off enough on our, our coils in the stator that we need a different stator? Guess what came in the mail today? A new stator. So we'll find out if the voltage we're getting out of this guy is truly the voltage that's required to power this CDI. So the question is, is 20 volts AC enough out of this guy to power our CDI box to where it's happy enough to send a spark? And this was one that came in that $30 kit and I can tell you right now, like see that winding? That doesn't make Papa very happy. However, this winding on here, this would just be to charge the battery. I, I'm pretty sure that this is your, your coil for the yeah, it is because it's the redwood white stripe. This one is going to be to charge your battery. Either way. See, in this coil, you can tell they wrapped with like silicone or whatever to keep that. This looks like. I'm sure this was made in factory A. <laughs> right across the street from factory B where all the other people work. I wasn't. I was going to make another China joke, but I figured you can only do so many jokes about China in one day. Just for fun. Obviously these have different connectors than this guy. So we'll have to rig that up, but let me get a meter real quick and just compare these side by side. They are, for all sights and reasons, identical. I see a three on this guy and a four on that guy. Okay, before we slap this on, I just wanna compare these two. Um, this was the one that came in the $30 kit. It's not siliconed on the charging coil. This one is. The only difference I see is that this has a three on the casting plate. 
That's got a four. But we're on ground. Let's see what we get for. Our ohms on the um, AC power to the CDI. So 328. Let's go to this guy. Four hundred twenty ohms. Okay, so that's more resistance. How about on our? This is the firing signal. One hundred thirteen ohms. And that would be this guy. This coil right here is your blue and white. One hundred thirty-three ohms. Was it on this guy again? And 13 ohms. Okay. Well, let's put this on and see. Well, just for fun, let's check the the uh, charging coil for the battery, which I believe is yellow and yellow and white. 0.6 ohms. 0.7 ohms. 0.5 ohms, 0.5 ohms. Okay, so we did get a big difference on our AC power. This one's got 420 ohms. And this guy has 330 ohms. So does that equal more AC voltage? Let's put it in there and crank it over, see what we get. Okay, first issue is this exist existing guy, this has a plug connector. These have all these bullet points on there. So what I could do could cut off this connector and put that on there or I could get bullet connectors. Let me see if I have bullet connectors. Okay, so I did find some bullet connectors, however, they are female. And I don't want to maul our wiring loom yet. So I think just for testing purposes only, just to make sure this works, I want to just connect using these things. Now we got to be careful. Here's our trigger wire to our trigger wire. And then our blue these ones are your charging um for your battery that goes to your rectifier, so we're not concerned about those right now. So our blue sorry, our blue is our trigger. Okay, so those are hooked up. Let's just make sure those aren't gonna touch each other just for testing purposes only, right? Just to make sure. Should we see, go ahead and see if we got spark right away? Let's do that. Holy smokes, we have spark. <laughs> we have spark. Can you see it? There's spark, we did it. Ah, I knew, I, of course I knew it was gonna work. Um, so the difference was the stator. Now I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see. Let's get out of ohms. What 
Okay, so this is our AC. Let's get this up here where you can see it. This is our AC. Um, oh, we're still on ohms. So we want to we want to see what voltage is putting out. This is our AC power to power the CDI. Yeah, and it's putting out 48 volts. So that is considerably more than the 20 volts we were getting. And then this is our signal wire. And that's up to 0.3. So those are all considerably higher than what we were getting. We were getting 0.1 volts on the blue white and then the red black, we were getting 20 volts. So, well, gee guys, we did it. So I think Ultimately, what I'm going to do, um, there's a lot more work that this thing needs. It's missing an air filter. We're missing an exhaust bolt. But the big victory being we, we got Spark after all this. So thanks for following along. following along. This was a fun adventure. I think ultimately I'm just going to make, because I've learned so much through this process on these Chinese quad, I'm going to make a video of like everything to check for Spark. Because there's tons of videos out there of, well, you can wire it this way to get spark, but it doesn't really go through and actually test everything. You just guess. We don't even guess. You just modify it to where it's going to work, but then your kill switch doesn't work. All your safety doesn't work. Um, be smart, man. Use your meter. It took me a learning process. We figured out. Thanks for sticking around. Um, we'll see you on the next video.